This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast to contain spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Top, Top Gun. Gun. Maverick is the sequel to 1986's Top Gun and unlike its predecessor is a good movie directed by Joseph Kaczynski it sees Tom Cruise return as Pete Mitchell as he is tasked with leading a group of Navy pilots including the son of his fallen best friend Goose this ragtag group of pilots must learn to become a team and fly fast if they want to defeat America's arch nemesis the bad guys it's up for six academy awards best picture best adapted screenplay best film editing best original song hold my hand by lady gaga best visual effects best sound it has the highest rotten tomato score of any of the best picture noms both top gun maverick and the banshees of inisherin have 96s but top gun maverick has more reviews. We won't review this movie because we've seen it uh, a million times. More, I think the discussion with this is the fact that it's up for best picture. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely um, a, a surprise best picture nominee in the sense that action movies don't usually get here. And this is a, I would say, like a pretty standard action movie in in all the ways that you would want it to be. And it's heightened um, a little bit. And I... A lot bit. Thousands of of feet. Correct. Yeah, it's way up there. Um, I will say, I disagree with your initial take. I liked the first Top Gun. This one is certainly better. And beyond that, this is one of the best action movies that has ever been made. Don't conflate liking something and it being good. It's still a good movie. The first one is still a good movie. First one's a bad movie. (laughs) It's lovable for reasons that we've gotten into in past episodes. But, I mean, that movie's a mess. This one, definitely more of a real movie. But as you said, it's an action movie. And action movies don't win Best Picture. They don't often get nominated for Best Picture. Recent winners, like last 30 years for action movies, Lord of the Rings... Braveheart, Gladiator, but those even fall more into other categories than straight action. Like some of those are more epics. What about and like it, No Country for Old Men? Like that that's somewhat of an action movie. Yeah, it's never like a straight action movie. Yeah, and this is chases, mm-hmm. dog fights, like a a very trite basic uh, romantic storyline. A lot of cliches, pretty corny, but like again, hits all the right notes both in terms of like the action which is unbelievable in terms of like the fact that they actually flew and the corny stuff is like just corny enough that it's campy and a little bit nostalgic and hits those right notes and just this whole thing, this everything works here. This is the best popcorn movie of 2022 it was number two at the box office as far as how much money it grossed behind avatar the way of water but this is i'm glad that this is nominated because even though in a lot of ways it's not a best picture quality movie i like the inclusion Mm -hmm. of whatever the popular answer might be for what was your favorite movie this past year and that's where the best versus favorite thing falls in the people who will say top gun maverick was their favorite movie of this past year might also contend that it was the best movie uh, of the last year and it wasn't and like pound for pound there are issues that would disqualify it from truly being any sort of prestige movie it's vague it Mm -hmm. tells its story but it doesn't really tell its story it kind of more leaves it to you that it certainly it's has be, more of a plot than the first one did. An yeah, actual I, plot. Yeah, I mean, with all due respect to the first one, I just a lot know, of goofing around with the boys. I'm not even considering that <laughs> any sort of thing that should be taken seriously. It can be a thing that is beloved, but as far as... You're right, there's an absence of plot in the first one. Yeah, th- this more... It does have the beats of some cliche action movies, but the vibes are just so high. And if it wanted to, it could do things that would make it a better candidate for best picture. It could add in yeah. the other side. It could give you the perspective of who they, they could just address who the bad guys are. They could have them plotting for, oh, okay, they're, they're attacking the, you could get into the planes of the bad guys when they're fighting back. Like this could have been a prestige movie. It could have been a prestige movie that like goes in depth, but it, 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 it wouldn't could, have been as good. And it could have been like people three, or people it, wouldn't like it as much. Yeah, it could have been like three hours long. It decided that it was going to be a pretty a pretty uh, cut and dry action movie. What's the runtime? Like two two ten? Two hours and eleven minutes. Okay, two ten. Yeah. So that's 
and it it, it doesn't if drag you cut at off all. that eleventh minute, then you don't see Jennifer Conley at the with the Porsche. That's not true. You, that that includes the credits. I know. So and also yeah, you would get truly, one minute less of the Lady Gaga song. The end stinks. of the movie is really them getting into that. Uh, kind of bad plane mm -hmm. that plane doesn't look as good as the that other plane ones. is not hot i said we're not going to review the movie when we talked about this movie a million times my favorite part was that all it is is tom cruise stealing planes mm -hmm. and john ham being really mad and john ham that's one of john the like four john ham characters and i love the john ham what are you doing that's not how it's supposed to be done character and that's all john ham does yeah. in this movie oh, yeah. every word he speaks to Maverick is Mitchell. If I had my say, you'd be fucking dead right now. And you're like, oh, okay, easy, John Ham. And then there's the other guy, like his his right hand man, who's just like, I love rubbing his chin and making Maverick. faces at the. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I secretly love you. <laughs> I saw this movie what f three or four times in theaters. Uh, seen it a few more times streaming. So it's definitely my most watched of the Best Picture nominations because it's the most accessible for sure. It's the most rewatchable. Uh, it, I, I still think that this is, if not my favorite, uh, like one of my two favorites from this past year, gives me goosebumps every time. I know it's not like the best movie of the year, but there's something to be said about how accessible and how enjoyable it is. I don't want to make decisions for you. I'm pretty sure this is your favorite movie of the last year. Banshees is it's a 1A, yeah. 1B situation with this and Banshees. Banshees is clear cut. My favorite. And I loved a lot of movies from this past year. And Top Gun Maverick is definitely one of them. I loved it. It wasn't the apple of my eye the way it was for a lot of people. But I'm very impressed that they made an action movie that did still check a lot of boxes while staying true to the campiness and the corniness of this. And I, I appreciate that they didn't tie in a rooster we call him rooster i call him Slowpoke. that they didn't just give uh slow poke the obvious storyline with the only woman pilot in yeah. his group yeah. that they just kept that to like they're, they're this group that might not all get along but they're gonna make it work plus there's this nerdy guy and we call him bob <laughs> who is played by bill pullman's son that's right so uh lewis pullman Shout out to that to that guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, this is uh, the characters are good. The acting is good. The fact that they did all their own stunts and stuff, all good marks across the board. I loved this movie. Its shortcomings were understandable and acceptable because, yes. like I said, I'm not watching it to give it a lot of uh, awards. And you're kind but, of an asshole if you watch like this kind of movie and you're and you're like attempting to poke holes. My only two real issues with it were both music choices one <laughs> is that the on the beach scene where they're playing football that could be that's a, a bad timeless scene. no i i think it, it's a great dog scene. fight football makes no sense it, oh of course the, the miles teller just like shaking his belly that whole thing was great and they're they're, well, yeah, for sure. They like, all have like different looks at times too. Like they're where they're changing bathing suits yeah. throughout. I don't know what's going on there, but it's great. And John Ham's like, "Why are they playing football? They're not supposed to be playing football." If I had any say, you'd be out of a job. Right. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Mitchell. <laughs> but do we think that he kills Ice so that he can take over the mission? <laughs> sure. But the uh, the choice of that terrible one republic song i'm like man this could they could be showing this scene at weddings for years this could be people's first uh dance they just show this on a thing and it's got the stupid whistle uh ryan tedder thing the juxtaposition of like the score which is great in this movie versus like the musical choices Agreed. for the soundtrack could not be on opposite ends and then uh hold my hand by lady gaga being <laughs> up for best original song that movie that song stinks. stinks i've i think differently of some friends who have said like man isn't that song a banger no it's just like out of the cliche handbook every part of it is just mismatched together it's like each section they tried to make as boring as possible it's a million things you've heard so many times the good thing is <laughs> The good thing is that it probably won't win. I think that Natu Natu, that absolute acid trip from RRR, mm -hmm. is going to win. I take it. Give me that. Yeah. Give me that. Give me the song from the end of uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, the Mitski David Byrne thing. There are a lot of good uh, songs up for it this this year. Not this one. 
We talked about in the Avatar episode why this isn't going to win. It has the fourth best betting odds. We're recording this prior to the SAG Awards, so maybe that could change. But this fourth best, fourth best. Okay, wow. It goes as of uh, this recording. Goes everything, everywhere, all at once. Banshees, All Quiet on the Western Front, Top Gun, Maverick, and it's tightly grouped with All Quiet on the Western Front, Top Gun, Maverick, and The Fablemans. But since the Oscars began looking the way they do now, the ninth Oscars, 1937, having the Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress, no movie has won Best Picture without being also nominated for Best Director or an Acting Award. This isn't up for any of those. Would you have this up for any of those awards? Probably no. not. No. No. I but, but I would I would honestly consider this movie uh, best picture chum. We've had this conversation. Yeah. I think that this is chum. I I wouldn't give it. I, I'm surprised that it has the fourth best odds. I wouldn't give it a serious fighting chance of winning. I so I won't consider this best picture chum because it's interesting that it's even there. Some but when that's I think why best I picture kind of, chum. That's why I kind of consider it chum is that it's it, it's so far outside of the box of what you usually include in a best picture nomination. Yeah, but when I think of best picture chum, I'm thinking of like wallpaper on the category announcement they were like oh yeah that mo- uh fox catcher if that movie was even nominated i don't think fox was. catcher was but arrival was it up for fox it? catcher I, I mean it was up for individual awards i i think that it was nominated for best picture i know that mark ruffalo was uh, was nominated for it and possibly chan tatum and steve carell probably aren't getting nominated for that but movies like that where you're like oh yeah it's an interesting movies movie yeah that this but like when Get Out was nominated or this being nominated, Let's, I the, see that and I'm like, ooh. Accessible movies. Accessible movies rarely yeah. get here. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's why this like, I think is accessible. more of an achievement that it's even nominated. It should just be happy to be here. If th- this is an MTV movie award movie. Yeah, I hope that this block, wins a true blockbuster. I hope that this wins a million of those. But and it, Steven Spielberg was one of the guys that was like, this is one of the most important movies in the history of cinema because it he said that it what? It saved it saved it saved movies. It's and it also saved um it saved Pete Mitchell from the bad guys. <laughs> That's right. Because you gotta watch out for those bad guys. That is Top Gun Maverick.